bread and breakfast and it's kind of bread and breakfast. He was hired to Angels, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap-up for 2024. This is part two out of three. I read a total of 25 books this month and I am a yapper so we are splitting it up into three parts. Part three will not be up for a while. If you watched part one then you know that I was in a bus accident at work. I got a concussion, a lower back injury, and whiplash so you know sitting and filming and editing hurts my little brain and my little back and my little body. So it'll be up when it's up. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood and I gave this a four out of five stars. So this book follows Mallory Greenleaf who has given up chess since it tore her family apart four years ago. When her friend asks her to play in a charity match, she reluctantly agrees and that is where she meets and beats the reigning world champion Nolan Sawyer. So instead of being angry about losing to this new player. Nolan is very intrigued and he wants to play her again. So with a cash prize on the line, Mallory agrees to play and she is starting to find it difficult to separate her family from the game. This is actually my first Allie Hazelwood book. A lot of people know her for her female and STEM books, which I have not picked up, but I definitely do want to pick up more of her writing after this. I really enjoyed Mallory and Nolan together. I think the dynamic was really well done. I loved how patient Nolan was with her feelings surrounding chess. I think that their banter was really fun and I loved watching them learn to trust one another. I also really liked learning more about Mallory and the reason why she has such a distaste for chess. I will say that Nolan was definitely my favorite of the characters. I think he's just a sweet little cinnamon roll. I just personally think he deserves the world and I want happiness for him. I definitely would not be mad if we got more from these characters. I also think the dynamic between Mallory and her family was a big part of this book and I really liked seeing their journey. It honestly broke my heart to see the situation that they were in. I really liked seeing Mallory open up more about the guilt that she was carrying and how it was affecting her. I also think that the look into the gender stereotypes in the chess community was very well done. And I do think that it could be applied to a lot of other male-dominated sports and things in society. Overall, I really like this one. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Pretty Furious by E.K. Johnson and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows five girls in a small town in Ontario. They have decided that they have had enough and they take matters into their own hands to seek revenge on the people who have wronged them. I'm usually a big fan of like female rage revenge stories but this one was just so boring. It was a very quick read. I did finish it in one sitting but I can't say that I necessarily enjoyed it. I just thought that the pacing was a little bit stilted. It almost felt like you were dropped into the middle of a random story and you were supposed to know who all of these characters were. I searched to see if this was like a prequel to a story but I can't find anything on Goodreads that says that so if it is please let me know because then it would make a lot more sense to me but I was just so confused throughout most of the story. I did listen to it on audiobook and I definitely think that that did heighten my enjoyment a lot because the narrators did an amazing job with these characters. You could really feel their raw emotion. I think that the best part of this story was the female friendships. I think you could really tell that these girls really cared about each other, but other than that, can't say that it was for me. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. Next up we have Cursed Boys and Broken Hearts. This is by Adam Sass and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Grant Rossi who believes he is cursed after he makes a wish on a rose at his family's bed and breakfast. After a devastating breakup he spirals into a pit of depression and so his family suggests that he return to the bed and breakfast where the wishing rose resides. Grant reluctantly agrees and upon his arrival he discovers that his aunt has hired Ben who is his childhood best friend and the first boy to ever break his heart. He was hired to help repair the rundown bed and breakfast and it's kind of the story of them rekindling their romance. I read Your Lonely Nights Are Over by this author and really really loved their writing style so I was excited to jump into another one of their stories. I thought this was such a cute second chance romance and I loved these characters. Both Grant and Ben were very complex characters. I think that they were so sweet and cute together. 
Their banter between the two of them was so well done. They had me giggling a couple of times with their back and forth. I think that they had really great chemistry together and I loved watching them learn to trust each other again. Grant is probably one of the most frustrating characters that I have read about, but you honestly can't help but love him. He grows so much by the end of the story. I think that his mental health struggles were done in a very respectable way and I really loved that he reached out for help through SSRIs and therapy. I also absolutely loved Ben and how patient he was with Grant. I think that he was very good at validating his feelings, but also putting him in his place when he needed to. He let him go through all of the emotions that he needed to, but was still there for him in the end. I just think he is the sweetest little angel and I want to protect him at all costs. I honestly cannot wait to see what this author comes out with next. I really enjoy their writing style. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Cerulean by Amy Ewig and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Sarah who has never really felt like she belongs with the Cerulean in the city in the sky. She is chosen as the next sacrifice which means that she must fling herself from a cliff in order to break the tether that is holding her city to the land below so that they can move to a different location. But when she flings herself from this cliff, something goes wrong and she finds herself in the land of Kaolin. There she is captured by some humans and she is held captive for their greed. I don't know what it was about this book, but I really could not get into it. It is quite long for what it is, so that might play a role in it, but I just felt like it dragged so much. I definitely think that it could have been shorter and still told the same story. I just didn't feel a connection to any of these characters and I didn't really care what happened to any of them. I thought the idea of the Ceruleans having blood magic was very interesting, but I really wanted to know more about the why behind it. We are just kind of told that it is a thing, but we never really get a backstory. So unfortunately, it was not for me. I don't think I'll go out of my way to continue the series. If the second book falls into my lap then I might pick it up but I'm not gonna go on a hunt for it but I give it a three out of five stars. Next up we have Body Check by L. Kennedy. I gave this one a 2.5 out of five stars. This one follows Hayden who has always felt like she is in competition with hockey for her father's attention. He owns a Chicago hockey team and it has always been his pride and joy. When Hayden is visiting her father in Chicago, she goes to a bar one night and that is where she meets Brody Croft. She takes him home, they share a steamy night of sex, and then she wants nothing else to do with him. But then she discovers that Brody is actually a player on her father's hockey team. That's when things get a little bit complicated because like she said, she doesn't want anything to do with Brody, but she also has a boyfriend back at home that she has an on again off again relationship with and she's got to figure that out as her feelings for Brody grow a little bit more each day. Okay so this is definitely probably a me thing but I personally do not like the cheating trope and I am not the biggest fan of when it is employed in books. I didn't know that this was the cheating trope going in. Personally, it, it might just be me, but I think that if you're on a break, you're still in a relationship and you probably shouldn't be off, you know, having sex with other people. But again, could just be me. I just don't like it. I did really like Brody as a love interest. I wish that Hayden had been more upfront with her feelings towards him rather than pretending they just didn't exist. I do think that they had good chemistry together, but some of the dialogue in this was so cringy and it gave me the ick right away. I did like the side plot of the betting scandal. I think that it was a good break from always thinking about the romance, but it was rather predictable, which kind of sucked. It was a very quick read. I finished it in one sitting, so if you're looking for something that you can fly through, this might be the book for you, but just be aware there's a lot of cheating in it. And overall I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars, mostly because of the cheating and the icky dialogue. Next up we have The Helpline by Catherine Collette and I give this a 1.5 out of 5 stars. Womp womp. So this one follows Jermaine Johnson who has trouble connecting with people. She has recently been laid off from her job but then she is offered a position at City Hall where she will answer the phone and answer questions for the Senior Citizens Helpline. She discovers that the mayor has a plan to shut down the senior center to get rid of the troublemakers that are feuding with the neighboring golf club run by Don Thomas. Jermaine originally wants to help the mayor any way she can, but as she gets to know these troublemakers a little bit more, her opinion changes. I was not the biggest fan of this, obviously, if I give it a 1.5 stars. I just found the characters to be very unlikable and the plot overall to be very boring. I did not like the way that people took advantage 
advantage of Jermaine because she didn't really understand a lot of social cues or social interactions. I also was not the biggest fan of the love interest for the same reason. I think that he took advantage of Jermaine a lot and it just gave me the wrong type of feelings. I did give half a star solely for the group of seniors. They were probably the only reason I continued reading the book. I thought they were the saving grace for it, but definitely not for me. I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is When Among the Crows by Veronica Roth, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Demeter, who has traveled to Chicago from Poland in the hopes of finding Baba Yaga to break the curse that Ayla has. At the same time, the Knights of the Holy Order are searching for all magic users in order to eliminate them. I would have loved if this was a full-length novel. It is a novella, so it is quite short, but I think that these characters could have been developed so much more and we could have gotten to see so much more from this whole world. I think that the secrets that they were all hiding from each other were really well done. They definitely kept me invested in the story, but like I said, I think that the dynamics between them could have been explored so much more if we had gotten a full-length novel. I think that the world building in this was so well done, especially for such a tiny little book. I really liked learning about all the mythical creatures in this world. I do think that it was quite slow in the beginning, but it did pick up as the story progressed. And I absolutely loved the ending and the twist that came with one of these characters. Like I said though, I wanted it to be a full novel, but I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I will talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Summer's Edge by Dana Mele, and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place on the one-year anniversary of their friend Emily's death. A group of friends return to the lake house where the tragedy occurred. As they're settling in for the weekend, mysterious things start to happen. I personally think that this story is one that you need to go into blind, which is why I kept the synopsis very vague. There is not a single likable character in this story. The friendship group is so toxic, which makes their dynamic very interesting and quite complex. Each character had their own secrets that they were keeping from one another, which kind of plays into the overall story. I liked the in-between chapters, and I think that that was an interesting concept for the story, but I do think that a lot of the characters kind of blended into one another. I also think it dragged quite a bit in the middle, but the ending was one that I did not see coming, so I did like that aspect of the story. Overall, it was an okay read. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the next 8 books that I read for the month of August 2024. Part 3 will be up when I have time to film and don't feel like my head is going to explode, so please be patient with me. I will be back, I promise, with the final eight books that I read. If you're interested in the first nine, that is already up on my channel, so you guys can check that out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!